Hello everyone, my name is Eagles Vox and welcome to my review of the Logitech G13 Advanced Game Board. This is a relatively new and relatively not really new gamepad, which is essentially half of a keyboard. Uh, game board accessory for desktops pretty much you could use it with a laptop and actually I had a cousin who had one a long long time ago and used it with a laptop but considering how much it weighs I simply just wouldn't recommend it the G13 features a wonderful naturally contoured design as far as the curvature and position where your hand goes on the device I'm going to elaborate on this in just a little bit but that's actually my favorite feature of the G13 it has 25 programmable keys customizable backlighting like most of their G series keyboards, onboard memory for customizable profiles for all of your games or programs or whatever you want, that way you can take it with you and use it at LAN parties or just if you have to reinstall your OS, you don't have to reconfigure your game files. It's all saved on the gamepad itself. The game panel LCD on the G13 is actually really nice. It's a little bit brighter than the G510 keyboard that I have. And of course, it can be used to feature just about anything, game statistics, uh, CPU monitor statistics, RSS feeds, email feeds, media player info, pretty much anything you want. As far as keyboard features go, there is of course 25 programmable keys as well as a programmable joystick. Now this joystick isn't quite what you would expect when you hear the word joystick. It's not a full motion, full digital joystick. It's actually more like an analog D-pad. It has four directions, and by default, they are actually programmed to WSAD, WASD. Basically, the centered keys are automatically default binded to WASD, and they have indentations. That way, your fingers can comfortably find their way back to your movement keys whenever you're hitting other buttons. This is actually really convenient and really nice and very effective. It There's a lot of keys on the G13. As I said, there are 25 programmable keys. It's really, really easy to lose track of where you are when you're hitting the keys and smashing your fingers across the buttons. And so having those indentations on those keys is actually very, very nice. And it helps, I don't know, it cups in the finger pad of your finger. So it makes it a little bit more comfortable. The sheer number and great positioning of the keys on the keyboard allows you to pretty much replace your keyboard when it comes to gaming with the G13. 25 programmable keys, that's a good chunk of the keys on a keyboard, and they're positioned in such a way that you can set up for shooters or MMOs, all of your hotkeys and all of your movement and character control keys in very comfortable, convenient locations that allow playing to be done pretty much exclusively with the G13 and a mouse. You don't really need a keyboard for gaming with it. There's a few things I want to touch on as far as build quality goes. It of course comes with an 8 foot cable, which is absolutely fantastic. There are too many keyboards and mice nowadays that come with really short cables that make it very frustrating, especially if you have a setup like mine. My setup is all about recording and getting the best possible recording quality, so that means taking my PC and putting it pretty far away from the microphone, which is where also my keyboard and mouse and monitor are. So having really short cords means I'm constantly having to use USB extenders or hubs and that's just really not ideal and actually can lead to some power issues that I have. The 8 foot cable allows me to set up the G13 next to my keyboard and the USB cord reach the USB slot that it needs with absolutely no problem. Logitech has spoiled me with their G430 headset which I've done a full review and unboxing in a separate video but they've spoiled me with the cloth braided cable that they included on it. I love braided cables but their cloth braided cable is actually one of my favorites to date and I would have loved to see it on the G13. However, I understand why it wouldn't be, especially with how thick that cable is getting all that copper in there. Probably wasn't going to be a good idea, but I still would have liked to seen it. The G13 Advanced Game Board is actually very durable, rugged, and actually heavy, which may not sound like a good thing in terms of portability, but for desktop use actually makes it very ideal. The gamepad itself is actually pretty close to the weight of my full-fledged keyboard, which is quite impressive. It's made of very durable, rugged plastic. Everything feels really tight, really secure. I did a flex test on it. It has absolutely no flex to it. And then it has six grips, rubber grips on the bottom of it that are positioned in very convenient locations with that cover a lot of surface area and to prevent it from sliding around. Every keyboard I've ever owned after just a couple months, no matter how great the grips are, just slide around my desk. This thing, which keep in mind, you're putting your entire hands worth 
of pressure onto a tiny amount of surface area versus on a keyboard you're putting both hands in very light surface areas there shouldn't be much pressure to move it versus the G13 where you're pushing your whole hand on it and should be forcing it to move it never budges an inch for me it's actually really really nice in that regard that it never budges never slides I don't have to worry about just pushing it across my desk or anything it stays right there ready to go for me to game the contour design curvature of the G13 and the rubber comfortable wrist rest is actually a pretty much a lifesaver for me in regards to this device. I have a lot of joint and tendon pain in my hands as well as a cyst in my left wrist which is of course the WSAD hand that causes me a lot of pain during long gaming sessions. However the way the just the arch that you, the G13 keeps your hand elevated and with the rubber wrist rest supporting my wrist underneath it actually makes long gaming sessions very comfortable for quite a few hours on end and frankly with this in mind until I get a switch out for a mechanical keyboard and see how the mechanical keys alleviate some of my you know discomfort with typing I'm pretty much going to be gaming exclusively with the G13 for quite a while just simply because it makes it it's so much more comfortable. I can tolerate it so much more with the G13. Do have some minor concerns and just kind of other things to address in terms of the G13. That includes the joystick. It it's can very conveniently placed to where if I'm using WSAD, my thumb actually falls right on the joystick, but I can't figure out an appropriate use for it. By default, it's actually bound to WSAD directional, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to control WSAD from multiple sources, you know, to be hitting WSD and then WSD with my thumb and fingers at the same, like that doesn't make any sense. An idea I had that I thought would be pretty cool would be like using it, um, if you've ever played Gears of War, which I'm actually wearing the hoodie for, I did not plan that. If you're ever playing Gears of War, use the D-pad on the Xbox controller to switch weapons, so to use, it, to use that to just quickly flick my thumb and switch weapons and shooters or MMOs but it I, I tried setting that up and it I don't know it doesn't feel right it's not as responsive or really accurate or precise as just using the scroll wheel or hitting the number keys like I'm used to already using keyboard and mouse so I still haven't found really much of a use for it, it it's in a very comfortable location like it's it, it's perfect where it is but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it, and so that's kind of on me to figure out, but I've yet to figure out an appropriate use for it within my use. It took me quite a while to get used to using the G13, going from using a mouse and keyboard for a very long time to using a gamepad is actually, it introduces a very strict learning curve, which takes a little while to get used to. It's very much like switching from using a controller exclusively to using mouse and keyboard. It's a pretty big change and it's really easy for your fingers to get tangled up and lost amongst the 25 keys that it provides, but once you get used to it, it's actually very worth it. I'm also running into some compatibility issues with Logitech's gaming software. As I said with their G430 headset, it actually detects the G13 automatically and picks up the drivers for it, picks up the configuration for it automatically. But I'm running into a very strange issue where it's trying to, because I have the G510 keyboard, which has the programmable G keys on the side, and then the G13 gamepad, and it's trying to apply the same G key profile across both devices, and it's running into some huge compatibility errors. Keep in mind, I've actually tried this on multiple PCs, and in both Windows 7 and in Windows 8, and I've yet to find a fix for an issue or just, you know, make it work regardless. But, so it's been a little frustrating in that regard. It wouldn't be as big of a deal if just say, okay, it applies the same profile to both, the same key buttons do both, but no, the, the shortcuts start to break when you program a shortcut on one of the G keys for a specific device. For example, just as a quick example, uh, typically on my G510 keyboard I had the G7 key set as a shortcut for Gyazo, which I use for sh taking quick screenshots. You know, you uh, hit the button and then just drag it across the screen and it makes a screenshot. Very quick, I got very used to doing that. Setting up the G13 broke that. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it did. So I was like, okay, I'll just set it to G7 on the G13 gamepad and that should make it work, right? Well, yeah, it works if I hit G7 on the G13, but I no longer have any, I don't have much functionality with the G keys on my G510 keyboard anymore. So 
Not really sure what's going on with that. Haven't done extensive testing across multiple PCs, but I did try it on both Windows 7 and Windows 8 because during the time of my reviewing this, I did switch OS's and then I plugged it in secondary computer just to see if it would work. Didn't really get it working. Doesn't hugely impact my setup and frankly, I doubt it'll affect very many people because typically you're gonna have a keyboard with programmable keys or a plain keyboard and a gamepad. You're not gonna have both. So it's not gonna affect a huge percentage of people, but just a weird thing that I ran into. Overall, the G13 gamepad is actually a pretty awesome little gamepad. I never really saw the point of gamepads or, you know, side game boards before. I had a cousin who played with it for Battlefield 1942 and 2140, whatever, the Battlefield 2 and the new one, the futuristic one, and, you know, this was a few years ago. Had a really old one. It may have even been Logitech but he always used that for his shooters and i never understood the point i never understood why you would use one but it's it's one of those things kind of like a sound card in that you don't see the point before you own it but once you own it you're like yeah this is awesome i'm really going to use this and that is definitely the case with the g13 especially given the arch design and the comfortable wrist rest and what that does for my lengthy gaming sessions i plan on using this for a very long time one more side note as an extra feature, it would have actually been really cool to see rubber caps or rubber like grip caps on the WASD keys, but that's of course just a premium feature and I'm sure you can buy rubber key caps and whatever, but it was just something goofy that I thought of going with like the blue color scheme, just having them on the keys. That would have been really cool and really convenient, but again, I understand why these things aren't in there and I'm certainly not complaining. Hope you enjoyed this review, guys. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to check out the G430 headset review, as well as the unboxings for both this and the headset in the comment section below, as well as the written review, the full formal written review for this product in the comment section below. Big thanks to Logitech for making this happen, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching Epos and Chew. Let's play together. If you enjoyed the video, consider clicking on the screen to subscribe now. To watch another video, click one of the video annotations on the screen above. Links are also provided to our website, Twitter, and Facebook pages. See you next time.